Ms. Brodasiri. Hey. Thank you so much. Sister Maureen, I tell you the message that God has given you today, it is powerful. It is going to change our lives. It is going to heal us. It is going to do that which God has intended for it to do. Because when God has spoken, his word can never return void. Over to you, my sister. We've already prayed for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. I've been having challenges. I've never seen anything like it. And I'm grateful that the Lord has allowed me to get in finally. I logged in at five minutes too, hoping that I would make sure that I'm ready. But hey, I now understand when we say that the devil hates prayer. He has it with such passion, he will disrupt, disturb, distort, will do anything to disturb the hour of prayer. But I'm so grateful. And without further ado, let me go straight into the message of the day so that we have time to pray. I want to thank the Lord for my co-hosts, um, my, my co-presenters. I just want to thank the Lord for the messages that have been shared before me. Um, maybe our verse of consideration because of our time, I'm just going to go straight to John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. Shall we pray? Father, we have opened your word, and we pray that you may open the eyes of our understanding. I humbly ask all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. A few, last month, I, I had a break in. I had a thief who came in took televisions, all the gadgets, um, generators and everything. And I understood this verse uh, clearly to say that the thief cometh only for one thing, to kill, steal and destroy. But I want to thank God that Jesus goes on to say, but I come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And the, the times that we are living in are so trying and people are perplexed. Everywhere there is calamity, there is death. Here in Zimbabwe, I, it's like an everyday thing. You wake up and hear news of people that you love, people you know who have lost their lives. And I'm sure it's the talk everywhere. But uh, when we look at these times, we, have, we are left with more questions than answers. And we're trying to find where, where, do, we, where do we place our feet? Where, how do we handle the situation? when things are like this, because grief is such a devastating thing that it leaves you, you know, it, it destroys everything. I remember in 2013 when I lost my husband, I, my faith took a very deep knock and I wondered for a long time how I was going to go on in life, how things, you know, how the Lord was going to make things right, even though I knew his word, but I could not bring it to reality. I could not bring it into my life to make it work for me. But I, I, I am remembering Psalms 34, when then Jesus, when, when God says, Psalms 34 verse 7, God says, the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him. But when it came to my broken heart, verse 18 addresses my heart, and I'm sure it's addressing someone's heart this morning, that when things are bad, when your heart is broken, when grief has come, I don't care what has brought on that grief. It's not just death. Grief can come because of so many things. Grief can come because of sickness. Grief can come because of uh, devastating situations in life. I... I, 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 I said, Lord, I need to hear you speak to me specifically. And I heard the Lord saying in Psalms 34 verse 18, he is close to those whose hearts are broken. And that gave me a lot of comfort because, you know, the, 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 uh, the security, my security is taken care of by angels that excel in power. But when it comes to a broken heart, God himself comes down to touch a broken heart to make things right. And when Psalms speaks of a broken heart, it says God himself is the only one who can deal with a broken heart. And I'm saying this morning to someone who is going through whatever it is they are going through, may you not lose sight of what God is doing because the things that are befalling us are taking away even the strength to go to God. The things that are happening in our day are giving us 
You know, Master, the tempest is raging and we don't know where to hold, but the peace that we are going to uh, experience can only come from God. We need to experience God's peace in these times because nothing there is, there was, can separate us from the love that Christ has promised us. But if we do not cooperate with God, if we then focus on our pain and remove our sight from the one who has promised to take care of our hearts, then we are going to be destroyed by the devil because he has come to kill, to steal your joy and to destroy you. But Christ has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Psalm chapter 50 verse three says, our Lord is not going to keep silent. He is going to come and is going to make things right. He is going to, his, his things are not going to remain as they are, but there is coming a time, there is coming a day when the Lord is going to make all things right. Right now, we don't understand how, right now we don't understand when, but what we know is that he who has promised is faithful and he will not let his word go back without performing that which he ordained it to. I know in the Bible, one person who also asked a question, and right at the end, we all know his story, the story of Job. He asks a lot of questions. Actually, the book of Job is a book of a conversation where Job is asking questions. He doesn't understand what is going on in his life, just as you might not also understand what is going on in your life, but God has all the answers of what besets men. He actually is way ahead of us. He has provided all the answers. And when when Job asked a question, the Lord says to Job, now listen here, Job, let me ask you questions that you, let me answer me as a man, if you really understand the, the issues of life. We do not understand the issues of life. We do not understand why things happen to us when they happen. But what we know is what he has promised, that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that he will wipe away all tears, that he will make all things right, that he will be with us. If you are a widow, the Lord says, I am a husband and father to the fatherless. If you are going through, he says, I am I'm dealing with your brokenness in a way that only God can do. No one else can deal with a broken heart except God. Because if, if we look throughout the Bible, when Job's heart was broken, I love 42 verse five, when Job says, I've heard you, I have heard of you by the ear, but now I have known you, I have seen you. That's why God is taking us as if he is silent. He is walking with us in our pain. And he is saying this to every one of us. He says, I care. I know he is able. He says, be still and know that I am God. He is the only one who can wipe away the tears. Whilst we wipe our tears from our eyes, he wipes the tears from our hearts and we're able to go on, we're able to live. We're able to look at life and live again. Because if we focus on what has happened, grief has the ability to even distort the image of God. Grief has the ability to even... Um, to alter the way you think, alter the way you breathe, alter the way you eat, alter the way you sleep, alter everything around you. But we have a God who will make things right every day, every step of the way he has promised and he is faithful. And his promises, he is he makes himself even subservient to every promise that he has made concerning his children. So God is not careless with our salvation. Even in the midst of all these calamities, God is very caring and he is able to care us. That's why the song says, does Jesus care when my heart is sad? Oh yes, he cares. Does he care when I'm burdened? Oh yes, he cares. And this morning I'm coming to encourage someone to say whatever it is that you are going through, however burdened you are, however lonely you feel, Fill your, saturate your environment with the word of God, with music, and let the Lord speak to you the best way he knows you at individual and personal level. We might be going through this, this situation as a corporate, as the whole world, but God cares for every individual. He does not treat you as a country or the world. He treats you at individual level, and he is right there, wiping your eyes, making things right, making things better every day. Okay. Keep trusting, keep walking, keep hoping for our Lord is faithful. May the Lord bless you today. And I hope um, our message for next week will 
get in on time. But today, allow me to pray for someone whose heart is broken, who is failing to find where to hold, who has a question, but God is saying, I am your exceeding great reward. I am going to hold you. I'm going to walk with you. I will pray. Shall we pray? Kind Heavenly Father, we thank you this hour for the privilege to come before the throne of grace. Yes, dear Lord, we are going through a difficult time, but there is no emergency with you. You understand our situations more than we know them. You have seen them before we came to them and made a provision for each and every one of your children. Our eyes are dimmed with the tears, but may we see your hand of mercy move. Dear Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence in each and every one of us lives. We thank you, Father, for you are not a God who is careless with our salvation. This morning, as we bring your children all over the world who are hurting, who are losing, who are sick, dear Lord, we can only come but to you. We are not going to put our trust in science, but we want to trust that you are able to keep us from falling, even when we are fallen. You are able to bring to remembrance the beauty of trusting in you. May we draw our strength from just knowing that you care for us and you are there for us. Father, we honor you, we praise you. As we go throughout the day, may you comfort us through song, through, through prayer, and all, every word that comes from, from the Bible. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, we continue to pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.